Welcome to Newport County Votes, a series of forums featuring candidates for local and state offices and ballot questions Newport County residents will vote on in November. I'm Sheila Maloney, Managing Editor of the Newport Daily News, and we're here live on Thursday, October 12th. Tonight we are focusing on the three ballot questions facing Tiverton voters, and we are joined tonight by Town Council members and candidates Joanna Ruda, Don Ballin, Louise Durfee, Jay Edwards, Cecil Leonard, Brian Medeiros, and Arthur Buzz Wyman. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. The question that probably has gotten the most attention over recent months is a referendum asking voters whether the town should develop a plan to replace the financial town meeting. Um, and I basically, um, Louise, as president of the town council, maybe you could give us a little background on the financial town meeting as it operates now, and, and then we'd like to talk about the proposal and maybe some of the, the pros and cons of that. Um, you'd like me to talk about it as of now? As of now, as now, to, to let viewers know well, um, who may not have participated, what, okay. the, what the special financial town, or not the special, town, the, fin the annual financial town meeting, how it operates. The annual financial meeting passes upon the uh, appropriations for the town. And it's sort of been basic to the town's governance for 300 years. The, um, uh, we operate with a budget committee. At the present time, budgets go into the Budget Committee. The Budget Committee, under our charter, prepares the docket for the financial town meeting. It is published. There are a number of notice requirements, public hearing requirements. The, um, the docket, once published, is uh, presented to the voters at a financial town meeting. And that is the way it is. Um, that's, the, that's really the format. Now. I don't want to get ahead of myself because I know there's a lot of controversy about it and that's one uh, reason why it's uh, on the ballot. And people complain that it works imperfectly, but it does provide people in the world in which we live a chance to have their say. And that to me is exceedingly important and as long as we can keep it, and as long as we can give that say to people, it doesn't affect our long-range planning. I don't think that a number of other things that do that, like lack of funds, <laughs> but I think it serves, um, I, it serves really as an arbiter of where the town wants to go. Sometimes they're wrong, sometimes they're right, but it does provide, for example, I'll just give you one example. I've seen years when the library budget was cut and Budget committee went in, cut the budget for our library. And at the financial town meeting, Barbara Donnelly, chairman of the uh, trustees of the library, would get in and make her arguments, and that was restored. So that, that vehicle, I think, is, um, uh, I think it's still useful uh, with all the arguments that can be made, and I know Brian will make some, but we're prepared to to deal with that as well. I think before, um, Brian, we get to the, um, maybe what some of the options are, Don, in the um, forum previous to this, which was with all the candidates talking about some of the issues, you pretty eloquently laid out the importance of this question. Could you explain um, how this question came about and what it's asking voters? Now, it, it came about because we've been talking about for two years. This, this goes back to the candidate forums I think two years ago and we're talking about whether or not the financial town meeting should be eliminated and Brian's been a champion of that you know cause and I, I will give him he's been adamant about the fact that he thinks that this question needs to be changed I was uncomfortable with what we had for the replacement and in our discussions in not wanting to hastily put something out there that would probably suffer a defeat because you didn't like what was replacing what was there the discussion led to the fact that should we go this route and get this question on the ballot that, you know, should we support, you know, looking into that, we would be able to, as a council, uh, seek the election 
of a Charter Review Commission, which now has a period of up to one year to make decisions and report back. So we figured that we would be able to put this together sometime during this term, and so by the time the term was up in a two-year period, we'd be able to go to a general election with a valid question of, do you want to eliminate it, and if you do, here is what could replace it, with something well thought out rather than something that was we ran out of time, actually, in the discussion of it to put together something that everyone was comfortable there. I'm comfortable with this question because this question asks voters if they want us to take a look at what could replace it. If they are so adamant that they want to keep a financial town meeting, this allows them to choose that option. If, if this is defeated resoundingly, then it says to me that people are not interested and in listen to the options. But there are many options out there that would serve us well today, because today with the 11,000 or so, 12,000 registered voters, this is an antiquated system that worked well when the town size was much smaller. And as a matter of fact, all of our decisions used to be made. We did some research and looking back into book one, when, believe it or not, most of the decisions the town made was not made by a town council. They were made at an annual financial meeting. And the progression of that has come to be where the council now makes decisions and so forth. So it shows you that the usefulness of what served the smaller community sometimes can be outgrown, and this may be one of those things that's outgrown. Okay, thanks. Um, Brian, um, as Don mentioned, this has been one of your um, priorities. Um, maybe talk a little bit about what you see as the problems with the, with the financial town meeting and maybe what some of the options are. Sure. At, at, when we held the Obviously, the Charter Review Commission would come up with the options, but right. just to throw out some of those. Yeah, w when we held the public hearing on this, uh, someone, someone, uh, one of the residents said to me, you know, why do you hate the financial meeting or something like this? And I, I, the answer is, I don't. It's very entertaining. I enjoy going, and I'll go as long as there is a financial town meeting. But if you're looking for the best form of government, the best way of doing a budget for the town, this isn't it. This, is, to my mind, is probably the worst form you can use, not because of the people making the decision. There's, there's a real disconnect between between the rhetoric of saying, you know, this gives this is democracy, it gives people a chance to make their decision, and having 300 out of 11,000 people show up. It, for, to my mind, the vast majority of people have voted. They've said, we don't care to go to the financial meeting. Of many of the people who do go, they're not going to the meetings. They don't know what all the budget issues are. They're just going and they have a single issue in mind. My taxes are too high or I want to fund the schools more. It's not a good way to do things, and that's what my bottom line on all issues is. As far as this question goes, all this is asking people, it's not, as Don mentioned, it's not a specific plan. We were talking about a specific plan. I actually came around to the same, and based on a lot of resident feedback, that changing to the Portsmouth system of trying to retain for people's comfort's sake the financial town meeting is not a good idea. Uh, you retain all the problems any time that, that a, a financial town meeting is called for. What I'd like to see is, is essentially Prop 2.5. Now, it may not be with a 2.5% cap, maybe with the, the state-mandated 4% cap or gradually going down to 4%, but something where we say, okay, we elect our officials because we have a representative elected government. We give our town council the authority to work within certain parameters, and as long as they don't spend more than the, what the cap is, we say to them, we trust you, this is your job. We're giving you the job to fix these problems, and you can go up to that point. If you want to go over that point, you need to come back to the voters through a referendum where everybody can participate. There's no issues of if somebody was out, you know, couldn't show up and sit in the, in the bleachers for four hours, that type of thing. Uh, everyone will have a chance. Now, again, you're still not going to have 100% turnout, obviously. You may get 50, you may get 20, but you're going to get significantly more than at a financial meeting, and it's going to be a simple up or, up or down question. Do you want to exceed the cap or do you not want to exceed the cap? And if you do, in the lead-up to that, there'll be a discussion of what will happen if you exceed the cap, what will be cut if you don't exceed the cap. So people will have a basic understanding and can participate individually without having to know all the ins and outs and start voting on line items and do we need air conditioning here and a truck tire for this, and it starts to get pretty silly to have. I've been at these meetings where people are saying, does anybody know what we just voted on? And it, this is like an annual thing. You know, Does anybody know what we just voted on? Because people are voting and it's going quickly. It's not a good way to do things when you have 11,000 voters in town. It's outdated. There are better options, and all this question will do is if people, especially if they resoundingly say yes, there's no risk to saying yes. All you're doing is asking the town, come up with an alternative plan or several alternatives, and then give the voters another chance on, in two years to vote yes or no on whether they want one of these alternatives or to continue as we're going. But if we continue as we're going, I, I, I don't want to be the voice of doom, but I, I see the Portsmouth situation as being a perfect example of where we're heading if we don't do something about this now. I don't want to be reactive and wait till after 
it happens and say, well, we should have changed something, we should have done something. I would like to have what we saw the last three years where you have the budget committee, you have the council, and you have the school committee working together to come up with a number they can all agree on, nobody's happy with, but you can agree on that stays under the cap, and we can move forward that way as opposed to going and playing roulette every year at the, at the financial town meeting. Okay, thanks. Jay, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, as, a, as a candidate for council, as you're going around and talking to people, what are you hearing? Is this, is this an issue that people are concerned about? I'm hearing two things. People are worried about their taxes, always, and this is the second biggest issue. And I've been trying to talk to a lot of people about you know, development and you know, the potential of malls coming into town, and they said this is a big issue for them. Now, the majority of the people I've talked to have been for the town meeting, even people who, haven't, who don't go to it. I had woman, a woman tell me she, she didn't go to them, hasn't, hasn't been for like 10 years, but she still didn't want to see it uh, taken off. She didn't want to lose her opportunity is what she told me. Anybody else want to? Yeah, uh, Buzz and then Buzz and then Cecil, and, if, and then we'll move on to the other questions. Um, I, I just wanted to say that the voters, I, I would support this study. I'm not saying that I would support getting rid of the financial town meeting or not. But I'd like to comment when, when people talk about getting fair representation, Brian mentioned 300 or 400 out of 11,000 come. That's their choice. The Budget Committee goes through a process to present this budget to the Town Council and to the people. I think it's three or four months. I can be corrected on that. Yeah. Six months. Thank you. At the end, towards the end, at the end of their process or towards the end, they, they hold a public hearing. This is where people can come and talk to the budget committee, as they can come to the council with any item, any time, and present their case. I was at this public hearing this year at the budget committee, and I would say there was less than 10 people in the audience. And, so, and three of those 10 people are one, two, three, four. There yeah, are four. four of us, four uh, and, and, uh, and, this is and Sally Black from the school so there, committee, there were, other and the Glenn Stegman. The school committee, right. there were five people. So this was an opportunity for the people to come. Now, they don't know that, and that, that's, that's something that this charter committee could study and see if that was an option. That's all I wanted to add. Thank you. Thanks, Cecil. Cecil. Yeah, Buzz said part of what I wanted to say, yeah. and you said it well. Uh, I, I do want to add a couple of things. First off, uh, the myth that people get to vote on the budget is just that. It's a myth. And we started a procedure at the suggestion of a town citizen, uh, Ms. Epke, that the, docu the docket now has highlighted all the items that are not really able to be voted on. The last financial town meeting, that totaled over 80% of the budget was preordained. Uh, then if you look what's left, if you have a hole in the roof at the high school, that really isn't an option. You have to fix it. So that they vote on the budget is truly a myth anymore. I will say there is a social commentary aspect to it, and there is some value to that. But I would urge people to vote yes, just so that it can be studied, and let's look at it. Because with the vast majority of people, 11,000 voters, give or take, they clearly have voted with their feet, and they don't come. And one of these days, we're going to have no quorum, and we're not going to be able to get on our cell phones and call up our friends and relatives. And we're going to have to continue it, and we're going to have to continue it again. And then the question is, what do you do next? We don't know. The other thing is, if the town financial committee meeting votes to exceed the state limitation, what do we do then? And we've been partially to court over that issue. And the court ruling was pretty well to avoid the issue, and we worked it out. I will. I want to give credit to the budget committee, the school committee, and us on the town council. We have met the last two years uh, and worked things out pretty well in advance of the financial town meeting. And uh, I think the voters have supported our effort. They've they've been supportive in that effort, and so I think that it merits further study, and that's all we're asking. You know, let's take a look at it. Thank, Thank you. you. Joanne, did you? I feel the same way. I, you know, I'm not in favor of abolishing the town meeting, as I said earlier, but, um, but I, you know, I fairly will support the, the, um, the study. We need to look at that. But from where I sit, um, 
You know, when I start to hear about the Portsmouth, you know, that whole thing that went on in Portsmouth, I almost have to wonder that the debacle that went on in Portsmouth is because they haven't had a town financial meeting. And maybe the people there, I don't know, I don't, I don't talk to anyone in there, but from where I sit and from what I've observed, maybe the t people are just fed up with the fact that, you know, they're, 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 they don't have a say. So when they did come together, they were going to have a say. Those people did vote with their feet, and it may be because they were at a, such a level of frustration that they, they, uh, they had their political action committee, you know, watching everything, um, um, bringing, that, bringing that whole um, initiative to the forefront, and they did a good job, I guess, I mean, of trying to get everybody out there, and that's what they did. But from what I can see, I don't know, I have to question, is, is what happened there because the fact that they don't have a town financial meeting. We've had it. It's, it. It has its faults. No one says that it hasn't, but it's worked. Okay. Louise, you wanted to... Well, final thoughts before we move on to the other... And that is um, uh, the question of replacement. Of What do you do? Do you allow the council to do it? it the, this council, without proper assistance, would not be able to handle the entire budget. Without the most important ballot question we have is the number two, is the finance director. Good, dear. Nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, because we need that before we need any change. A council has to get a handle on what we have, what we can anticipate. And right now, we really don't have that. So I must say it is a segue, but that's the most important thing in my view uh, of all the three questions. And that's question two is, uh, would make what is now, is it, it's a part-time, is it part-time elected or part-time appointed? Part-time elected. Mm -hmm. Part-time elected treasurer position into a, a full-time appointed treasurer slash finance director right. position for the town. Yes. And um, this is certainly open to uh, Don. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I have no problem with this because I think you're going to see. Well, and talk a little a bit about why this is for this position. right. And talk a little bit about how this came about and why this is important. Well, how well it came about because when when you start looking at the budgets and the amount of money that the town is handling and spending, you know, uh, we've we've been very fortunate. It had good treasurers, but there's no hours set for the treasurer. The treasurer can come in two hours a day, one hour a day, doesn't even have to come in. So your department starts to get handled by, by clerks in the office uh, uh, running it, and the oversight is when the treasurer does come in. The, the number situation are uh, such that with a finance director, in terms of where money should be placed, you know, the short-term monies we carry, uh, there's, there's so many issues that really need to be addressed. The accounting issues that uh, every community is facing, you know, under new federal guidelines. and We're going to need somebody who's very up on this stuff to do the proper reports, make sure we're where we belong, and it's not going to be handled by this. Uh, part-time, someone could put their name on the ballot and get elected to that position, and really not because, you know, I mean, have all of the qualifications necessary to do that. When you elect someone, the qualifications are you convince the voter that you can do it. When you, you're going to put a position like this, and you're going to be able to bring somebody in who has all of that. And I believe if you, you know, if you really looked at where we went with this and what the, uh, the, the amendment and what it would carry, what they would have to, powers and duties that they would have to have, you know, makes this thing where we're going to require, uh, prior to being hired, at least the following credentials and experience, bachelor's degree or higher in business administration, accounting, finance, or some similar field, 10 years experience working in finance positions and or five years of management experience, knowledge of the GS, GASB regulations and Rhode Island federal finance regulations. Then we get into a myriad of uh, duties and responsibilities. We're going to be able to find an individual who can perform the job and perform the job well, and we're going to make sure of that. We're going to have somebody who's going to take us and provide us with the information that is so necessary, whether it be our functions as a council, the town administrator's function, preparation of budgets, so forth and so on. I mean, I have to agree with Louise. Without this position, it's going to take us a lot longer to get to another situation, let's say, with the financial town meeting. This is, this is 
at least the very first step we need to take. This is so important. I can't stress enough, no matter what you do on any other ballot question, you know, of, of all 12 that are there, the nine the state wants to give you and the three that we're putting out there, please really consider this question 11. This, th this really uh, can put us on the right track to solving some of the problems, the financial problems we have. And I can, I can speak sure. from a unique standpoint since I was the treasurer for four years before Mr. Amarantes. And I want to emphasize that it was Mr. Amarantes that brought this proposal to the council. He quickly gained our support. But I can tell you in my four years, it's not a part-time job. I was in early. I was in late. I was in every weekend. I made it uh, my business to break time out of my full-time job. And fortunately, I had an understanding boss that uh, was flexible that I had office hours that I maintained. And it took, uh, I would say on average, approximately 40 to 45 hours a week. And I don't want to mislead anybody that I was on top of everything because I wasn't. Uh, Gadsby 34 is a need that we're still trying to implement in a tremendous amount of work. There's a new Gadsby, which is Government Accounting Standing Board, that's coming down that has to do with the way you calculate funding of pensions. Uh, that's going to be a shock to a lot of towns. Not so much for us because we're pretty well on top of it. Uh, but it's complicated. Uh, I applaud Mr. Amarantes for coming forward, and I urge everybody to support that move. It, okay. It's really necessary. Louise wanted to say something, and then Buzz? Did you want to? Ladies before? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I just wanted to say we run a $32 million budget, and I'm so glad um, Cecil praised Mr. Amarantes because it made it easier for the council to come around and coalesce and say, we agree with you. But he initiated it. He was the guy on the spot at that particular point. It is long overdue. The strategy with regard to a financing, a $30 million financing, we had a TIF bond issue that still raises a number of questions as we, as we move along. Um, the day-to-day -day cash flows of the town, are they properly being done? The pensions, are we investing those appropriately to get the best possible return? I mean, it is a very large job, and um, so that is a critical vote. And I, somebody had mentioned, and maybe Buzz, if, if you could answer this, that there's already money in the budget for this position, and, yeah. and so this is something that the council has thought, it's not... Again, Mr. Amaranth was, was very nice around and actually taking the funds for a treasurer, his position out of the budget and putting the money into the position of finance director and had figured it out that uh, we were going to be able to get this accomplished if, if this passed and it's already been put in place within the budget and this is just a matter of this vote to get this. It's not an additional forward. expenditure. No, no additional expenditure. For Buzz? Which, which is exactly what I, I was going to do but in a nutshell what you're voting on is We've already approved the money in the budget for the finance director, as Mr. Bowen just stated. Whether you knew what you were voting on or not, as Brian said, it was <laughs> voted in. What you're voting on, because the, the present part-time financial director is an elected position, it's in our charter. So you're voting to allow us to change the charter to a full hired finance slash treasurer. Once that's done, and, and I hope you will pass it, I'm going to vote for it, then we need to go to the road, get the approval from the Rhode Island legislature to change that charter, which should be a, a mute point. Uh, and just to repeat, the, 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 everybody has said it already, it's a $32 million budget. There's two full-time and a half-time person working that finance department, and there's a part-time uh, finance director now, so we need the full-time. Thank sure. you. If I could. Sure. This, this question, and I strongly support this question as well, and, and this ties in with me again to the financial town meeting question, in that the, the opposition people are going to have to this, the people who are going to oppose it, is going to be you're taking our elected position and you're going to appoint it. Now it's more power condensed under the council. What I'm trying to explain to people is the council is not some alien force dropped down here to rule over you. It's somebody you put there who represents you. You want them to have the authority and the ability to be able to fix problems and take care of things as long as there's safeguards in place. This doesn't take anybody's right to, I mean, there's never been, a, that I've ever seen, a campaign for treasurer. Nobody ever knew what candidates were running on. It was you knew the name or you didn't know the name. 
this isn't going to take anybody's rights away any more than the financial town meeting. All it's going to do is going to build accountability into the system where now you'll, unlike the system now, we, if people don't like their taxes, they can't blame the council because the council can say, we didn't do it. It was done at the financial meeting by the voters. We don't control the budget. Don't blame us. If you change the financial meeting, if you put this in place, you are not going to have a situation where the council can be held accountable for the budget, which if people think it's a power grab, they need to understand that we're also going to be, or whoever's sitting here, is going to be responsible for that budget as well, as well as the school budget, because the school budget would fall under the parameters of the council. So the council would also have that ability to work with the school committee to come up with a financial plan that would work. And this treasurer position is no different. It's not taking something away from people. It's giving to you. The, your elected officials are you. And then try to get, get that people explain that. And that's the resistance I keep coming up with. People are so fearful of the council. And I'm saying, if you don't like the council, get rid of them. But they are you. Yeah. Cecil, this is a good segue, actually. And we have a couple minutes left. The third question, which I guess is then yeah, question budget, 12, budget is the budget committee. And, and you had made a comment in the break between the two forums that people are coming up to you and saying, why do you hate the budget committee? Yes, and, <laughs> and the question some, is to change the terms that's from... Right. Six There's some before. misunderstanding that this proposal is to eliminate the Budget Committee, and that's not the case by any means. What we're trying to do by shortening the term is to encourage more people to run, because right now it's a six-year term. Uh, in the past two elections, at least the last two elections, there have not been enough candidates to fill the available positions. So those who ran were elected, and then the council that was in power at that time appointed the, the other people. Um, and when you think about it, six years is a really long commitment. And having served on the Budget Committee for two years, I can testify it's a tremendous amount of work. And um, I was appointed to be town treasurer. Uh, it was the reason I left the Budget Committee. But I really wonder whether I would have had the staying power to do the same thing over for six years. So I think by shortening that term to four years, hopefully we can encourage more qualified people to run. It's an important job. It's a tough job. You, you can't win. If you, if you cut the budget, then the department doesn't like you. If you spend too much, then the voters don't like you. So when you go down the middle, you end up being disliked by both sides. And when everybody is angry at you on the budget committee, then you know, aha, we've I've done, done a pretty job. good job. Right. <laughs> so I don't know that that's a real great advertisement to get people yeah, right. to volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> also, when we reduce the trip, when, there, when there are vacancies on the budget committee, the charter calls for you can only appoint to the next general election. So you really, you created the position if somebody leaves as a two-year position. So, I mean, to reduce the term to four was a compromise, I think, from taking it right back to having all elected officials at two years, uh, you know, to, to reduce it to try to get some people who would, you know, because they tell you the same thing. I don't want to commit for six years, you know, but two or four would be different. And like I say, the replacement when somebody does resign or an opening is there, uh, we can only fill it till the next general election. So it's, it's a two-year cycle for, the, for unexpired terms, and yet it's a six-year cycle. And it kind of puts us where we have trouble keeping track of who's where and what's the election cycle. Okay, but. thanks. I thank you um, for joining us to talk about the ballot questions that Tiverton voters will be facing on November 7th and, at, and remind uh, viewers that election day is Tuesday, November 7th. Um, that's all the time we have for this forum, and I'm Sheila Maloney, Managing Editor of the Newport Daily News. On behalf of the NCTV Access Group, thanks for watching, and we hope you'll join us again for Newport County Votes. Good night.